following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. The lecture uh, for this uh, Saturday is uh, entitled The Metallic Planets of Alchemy. And this is uh, uh, a lecture that follows the previous two ones that we were given, or we gave, that is related with physiology the way in which the energies uh, relate with our physical body, our mind, psyche, and spirit. Now, we are going to enter directly uh, or to repeat something a little bit more uh, in detail about the metals. Remember that uh, we said that the metals of the earth, the veins of the earth, metallic kingdom, is like the nervous system of the planet earth. And uh, in the Hebrew Bible, in the book of Genesis, we read the sentence that states that the Spirit of God was moving upon the face of the waters. Of course, Spirit of God in Hebrew is Ruach Elohim. And this Ruach is also a word for uh, one of the three souls or the types of souls that uh, any person has. This is the thinking soul according to Kabbalah. Ruach. We will say because Ruach is the intelligence of uh, the Elohim. <coughs> this Ruach Elohim, or Spirit of God, or Spirit of the Cosmo Creators, is precisely the soul or the energy that we were uh, talking in the other lecture. We said that uh, the ains of ore, which is the solar absolute located in the seventh dimension or zero dimension, uh, manifest itself in this three dimensional world, in this universe, through the metals. That's why when we say the metallic planets of alchemy, we are talking about that 
Ruach Elohim, that fluid, fluidic light that emerges from the absolute, from the zero dimension, and that manifests in this three-dimensional world through the metals. As we said in the other lecture, that the copper is a vehicle for the electric fluid, as we use it in this day and age, for the electric energy. We have to understand and comprehend that the, the fluid of the Logos is related with the seven main metals. Uh, manifest itself in this three-dimensional world, in this universe, through the metals. That's why when we say the metallic planets of alchemy, we are talking about that Ruach Elohim, that fluid, fluidic light, that emerges from the absolute, from the zero dimension, and that manifests in this three-dimensional world through the metals. As we said in the other lecture, that the copper is a vehicle for the electric fluid as we use it in this day and age for the electric energy, we have to understand and comprehend that the, the fluid of the Logos is related with the seven main metals. Because when we talk about the planets, we always refer to the law of the Epta para Parshinok, which is the law of seven, the law that organizes. And uh, that reminds me or brings into my mind the book of Revelation, where it is stated there that the Lamb that we said is a symbol of fire or that fluidic energy has seven eyes and seven horns. And it is because the solar Christ, or that fluidic energy, organizes itself in this solar system, and in any solar system, through the law of seven, which are represented by the seven planets related with the wick, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, which is, of course, a wrong uh, organization, because the, the right organization of the planet is Moon the first, Mercury the second, Venus the third, Sun the fourth, Mars the fifth, uh, Jupiter the sixth, and Saturn the seventh. So here we find the seven metals of the earth, silver for the moon, quicksilver for Mercury, copper for Venus, gold for the sun, iron for Mars, tin for Jupiter, and lead for Saturn. So these seven metals are, we will say, in the meta, uh, kingdom of metals in any planet, the seven physical vehicles. In order for that fluidic force of the Logos, of that lamb with seven eyes and seven horns, to manifest in our world, in the earth. 
This is how we understand and comprehend that the logos in its subtle uh, activity helps the evolution of every single element in the earth. And of course, when we talk about the metallic planets, we have to understand that our physical organism attracts those uh, vibrations as uh, we were explaining in the previous lecture. Here, in the physical organism, we have to refer to the nervous systems related with the three brains. Remember that the cerebrum spinal nervous system is related with the father, the grand sympathetic nervous system with the son, and, and the parasympathetic with the Holy Spirit. These uh, three nervous systems act through the law of the triamatsikano, or the law of three, in order to organize in the physical organism the metallic planets of alchemy, which are related, of course, in the physical body with the endocrine glands, with the plexus, with the chakras, of our internal bodies. In this case, uh, uh, we have to mention the vital body or ethereal body, which is the superior aspect of the physical body. When the, we are tired physically and we go to bed, we leave the physical body. But the vital body never leaves the physical body, always stays there, floating on top of the physical body and attracting the prana, the solar energy, through the chakras. You know that uh, we have many chakras related with every gland in the organism. But we always mention always seven because uh, we always organize uh, uh, our system through the law of seven, that the law of organizes. There in the internet, in the forum, you can see the chart we place related with the nervous systems and uh, glands, how they are influencing the different glands of the human organism. The chakras are, of course, wheels that rotate and attract this fluidic energy from the different uh, forces from the planet or the solar system and the universe. The main energy that we uh, take from the atmosphere is the solar energy that the sun places during the day in the atmosphere. So during the night, our vital body uh, attracts or sucks that solar energy through the chakras, through the plexus, and transmit it into the glands. And the glands transform those... Uh, forces into hormones. And this is how our metabolism works thanks to the influence of the Ruach Elohim. Because when we talk about the metallic planets, we have to understand that these seven main genii related with the seven planets transmit their fluidic influences or Ruach Elohim through the metals. That's why it's always 
related with what uh, uh, it was explained in the last lecture, related with the hydrogen. I remind you that hydrogen means uh, hydro, water, in gene. Here we can also refer to our genes because in the fifth dimension, in the world of Hod, in the astral body, we have these uh, chakras which are in direct relation with the vital body that transform uh, those energies into hormones. Of course, we receive that according to our health, according to our uh, uh, physiology. Here we understand why, in order to enter into the initiation, sometimes we point at uh, the necessity of having a very healthy body the necessity of knowing how to feed ourselves physically, mentally, psychologically, because alchemy means transmutation of the forces of God, Allah, chemistry of Allah, of God, because this is a word that comes from the Arabic origins. And of course, is uh, energy divided in seven. The moon, for instance, is related with the thymus gland. And the thymus gland that has a chakra related with the subconsciousness, a particular subconsciousness and subconsciousness of nature. Remember that this is stated that the moon is the mother of the earth. Then you can relate how, by putting in activity this chakra, one can remember the past. The vibration of the moon. There are many practices that are being taught in Gnosticism in order to develop the chakra, the skull of the lungs. And it's called of the lungs because the thymus gland is located precisely between the lungs and behind the heart. Do not mistake and think that the thymus gland is related with the Anahata Chakra. Because many esoterists, they say that the Anahata Chakra is related with thymus, but it's in, in reality the Anahata Chakra is related with the heart. And the thymus gland with that pulmonar chakra that are related with the past lives. While in this case, the heart is related with the blood, with the sun, and that gives us that uh, power of intuition, premonition, hunches. And the metal of the sun is gold. So you find here, for instance, in one uh, uh, place, the relationship of the moon and the sun, very close. The thymus gland and the heart, intimately related. But of course, we have uh, the other planet, which is the second one, which is Mercury. Mercury relates directly with the whole brain. And also with a pineal gland. Related with the pineal gland, we know that uh, also we have another planet, but which goes out of the seven, which is Neptune. But if you find uh, and study the relationship of Neptune with the waters, and Mercury also with the waters, you find the relationship of the brain, the pineal gland, in relation with the sexual forces. That's why Mercury is, re is related with the uh, signs of transmutation, many topics that we were 
we are going to talk continuously in different lectures. Mercury of the wise is something that we have to understand. And remember that uh, Mercury is called in Greek terms or Greek words Hermes. And from that word comes Hermetic, related with the mind. And uh, it is stated that Hermes in Egypt was called Hermes Trismegistus, the god Ibis of thought or tut, which of course uh, uh, is a, was a, a great uh, uh, master that relates with the mind, with the brain, pineal gland. There in the head, of course, we have a lot of senses, but related with the pineal gland, we have the polyvoyance, or what the master or esotericism call the eye of dogma, which is polyvision, power of seeing, within the Akashic records. You can study the study of the earth, or the history of the earth, the solar system, even the universe, with the eye of dogma. And here, in the thyroid gland, we find Venus, really with a copper metal thyroid, 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 the thyroid, the thyroid gland. And the parathyroid uh, gland. There are the two glands that are there uh, together. One is influenced by Venus and the other for Mars. Then you find the relationship here with uh, this uh, chakra of clary audience, which is also related with the power of the word. Iron and copper, tired and paratired, tired and paratired glands. So, the power of the word is related with Mars. Samael, oh, here is better, is good to remember the seven genii related with the seven planets, from the moon to Saturn, Gabriel, Raphael, Uriel, Michael, Samael, Zahariel, and Orithiel. Samael the fifth is uh, the Logos, the Lamb, the fifth horn and fifth eye of the Lamb. Here you have to understand why the book of Revelation the, depicts the, uh, the lamb with seven horns and seven eyes. Because really, all of them, seven, that's why it's called Ruach Elohim, because Elohim means gods and goddesses. In this case, when we talk about the Ruach Elohim in relation with cosmic creation and with us, we have to understand that we are talking about the seven genii, the seven logos, that organize. Because in any solar system, you find many Elohim, gods and goddesses, many cosmo creators. Because we have to understand that in Gnosticism, we uh, affirm that our solar system has 12 planets, the sun being the 13 in the center. And every planet has its own cosmo creator. But related with the law of seven, we only talk about seven. That's why in ancient times, the wise men, the sages, were talking about seven. Not because they didn't know about the other five. Because they were talking about the creation of the human being, the solar man. And when we talk about that, we talk about only seven. 
So the ancient people knew about all of the planets of the solar system and more. So that's why the Lamb or the book of Revelation talks about seven horns, seven rays, or seven fluidic forces that work through the metals of the earth and any planet in the solar system, even in the sun. This is how all the forces are organized, because every planet has its own metallic kingdom. And the fluidic solar force of these logos, or seven genii, are everywhere in the solar system. That's why we said, what is iron? Is the Ruach Elohim of Samael evolving in the mineral kingdom of the earth and any planet of this solar system? But here, when we work in the self-realization of the being and we start transmuting the sexual force, then Samael works in different places, of course. Because they are one. As we said, the Holy Trinity, three in one, we were can say the Holy uh, Septuple Unity. Because they are one. I repeat, this is why in Book of Revelation, the Lamb is represented with seven horns and seven eyes. Because our one entity are organized. Christ, Avalokitesvara, or whatever name we want to give it to that fluidic energy that uh, is always sacrificing itself for matter. So the power of the word is Samael. That's why it says that when you acquire that, you rule the multitudes with the rod of iron. Iron, as is written in the book of Revelation, because iron is Samael. And from his mouth protrudes a sword. In English, it's beautiful to associate this because if you take the S, which is a symbol of the serpent, the fire, out of the word sword, you find the word word. So that sword that protrudes from the mouth of the fifth of the seventh is the word that hurts the multitude. In the way that is teaching the truth and telling everybody that we are demons. But that we can transform our seven demons and make a god of it. But it's not easy, of course. That's precisely the alchemy, transmutation of the lower metals into higher metals. Especially in gold, which is a symbol of the sun. That's alchemy. This is how you understand now how the alchemists hide that. And people, when they were talking about metals, they think they were talking about uh, the vulgar metals that are here, that the people take from the mines in order to make business. Of course, in the veins of the earth, they are like the, solar, uh, like the nervous system for the earth. And that's why we can utilize those metals in order to attract the forces. That's why the master says that the best uh, uh, magnetic uh, pentagram that you can uh, elaborate is with the seven metals. Because the seven metals are the vehicles for the seven fluidic forces of the Ruach Elohim. And this is how you understand how uh, we develop this clarity audience and power of the tongue. This is how Christ made the deaf to hear. Because here is the magic ear in the, in the thyroid gland. Hmm? When you transmute the energy, you, then you start hearing and understanding the knowledge. And if you are mute, Dump, then you talk after that. Christ gives the power. Mm -hmm. That's why he says, if somebody asks you anything, don't think. Just the Holy Spirit will talk for you. 
But that is a fluidic energy. It's not believing in anything. It's just alchemy. And then we find the sun, which of course is the heart of the organism, with its intuition, with the atom noose there, that organizes the whole transmutation. That's why when you said about the master talks in one of his books that the seven genii are in the sun, in the center of the sun. Well, the seven genii are also in the center of the earth, in the center of Mars, in Venus, and any planet of the solar system. Because they are Ruach Elohim. Do not think in Elohim like a person, but a fruitic force, Ruach, intelligence. And then we find here the planet Jupiter. It always we refer to the pituitary gland. It was clairvoyance. Jupiter, Zeus, the king of the gods. Here we find again Christ, the symbol. You can name Christ in any of the seven and then you find the meaning of it. So Jupiter, of course, is really with uh, inner Christ. Clary or clairvoyance. The way in which that chakra of clairvoyance, Akna, can capture the light and color waves, not only of uh, this three dimensional world, but the four dimension, fifth dimension, sixth dimension, and seventh dimension. Because with our eyes here in this physical world, we only capture uh, the waves of this physical plane. Some of them. But yes, it's some of them. Because they are uh, color and light waves, we recall television. But we cannot see them here unless we have a television. And the television will help us to see those waves. So they are, of course, passing here in this very moment, but we don't see them. We also, uh, in this very moment, we have the waves of uh, sound from radio, even the Internet. But can you see those waves here? You cannot deny that those uh, waves exist because we have the computer that proves that they exist television, many other things. So how many waves, how many uh, waves of sound, color, light, we don't perceive? Many. As long as we are creating, inventing instruments that allow us to see those waves. Before that, we just said, I don't believe, or oh, I believe. The main thing is to develop our inner senses, starting to see them without any help of any instrument. And finally, we have the last one, Saturn. The Ancient of Days is called Saturn, related with Saturday, the day in which we are right now. Sabbat is called uh, by the Hebrews, Holy Sabbath. But the Romans and Greeks call them Saturnalia. Yeah, you know that, Holy Saturnalia. This is something that you have to understand that Saturday is really related with esotericism. Its color is black, lead is, is metal. Related with the human organism, we find that Saturn is related with the spleen. But here in this area, the spleen, you know, is a gland or the organ that transforms the solar light that the vital body takes from the atmosphere into red cells. Anyhow, they are that fluidic force passes into the, so, uh, into the nervous system. And you find the relationship of the spleen 
with the kidneys. In the kidneys, above the kidney, we have the suprarenal. When the suprarenals are influenced by Saturn, what happens with the suprarenal glands? That's the word you call it, suprarenal? Suprarenal. No? Suprarenals? The glands uh, above the kidneys. Suprarenals. So, there you find that uh, fluidic uh, force that is called adrenaline. Do you know what the adrenaline is related with? When you are, for instance, afraid of something, your adrenaline is being emitted by the glands of the suprarenals. And uh, any animal can smell that. That's why I said that any animal can smell fear. But what the animal smells is that adrenaline from the glands. Then you find the relationship, of course, with Saturn. It's death. Many people are afraid of death or being killed. When you are acting or your glands are hyperactive in that way, then Saturn, which is concrete, related with the Earth, crystallizes that vibration into what we call in the kidneys, kidney stones. So that's why in the book of medicine, the master says, if you want to be rid of those problems with the kidney stones, you have to meditate in fear, anxiety, and many other of those egos that we have in that area that creates those stones in the kidneys. Uh -huh. But is Saturn the one that is doing it? You know, meaning that karma, cause and effect. And that's why Saturn is always related with great ceremonial uh, practices. It's coming into my mind now something very good for all of you that I precisely uh, wrote. The Master talks about in one of his books, The Revolution of the Dialectic, about the sacred pools of ancient temples. The temples of mysteries. That in this day and age, they have become pools for swimmers. But if you go into the different uh, religions of the past, you find that they were having always ceremonial pools. Ritual. That is still in this day and age, the only ones that I know that are practicing this are the Jews, related with the mikveh. The mikveh is a pool that was taught, of course, in the past by the initiates or in Kabbalah, a pool that has the shape of a bab, the letter bab or bow. The letter bab or bab, you know Hebrew is like a little comma projected down. That's the letter bab. Or a yod, they said, projected down. Symbol of the human being. Bav, or bow, the number six. Related with sexuality. What in reality, ancient people, Kabbalists, were teaching to humanity related with Saturn. Because you go into the mikveh in Saturday and practice a ceremonial 
Kabbalistic ceremonial that many of Kabbalists in this day and age ignore their meaning or they interpret that in the wrong way. We can say that this is a mikveh minit, a Hebrew word which means sexual, a sexual bath, in other words. A kind of symbol related with the baptism in other religions. You know that when you go uh, and you baptize yourself, they always do it with water. Submerge yourself in water or pour water into your body in order for you to receive the forces of Bina, the Holy Spirit, which is ruled by Saturn. Of course, uh, in uh, Kabbalistic language, there is something that uh, when you go into Saturday and submerge yourself in that pool that has the shape of a bab, you pronounce Kuma Adonai, or Kuma Hashem. Hashem means the name. Adonai means the Lord. Kuma means arise. But if you understand this, you will understand why it's written like that. It says, Kuma Adonai, Ve'afutsu, Oyevecha, Ve'anutsu, Misanecha, mipanecha. You submerge yourself. Kuma Adonai, Beya Futsu, Oyevecha, Veya Nusu, Misanecha, mipanecha. The meaning of that means. Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered, and the conquest of the land become in- instantaneous. Well, if you don't know esotericism, you think that you have to go physically and to conquer the earth. Hmm? How the Lord is going to rise? When entering into alchemy, these enemies refer to the enemies of our internal God. Those who hate God are our psychological aggregates that transform the metallic forces of the Ruach Elohim in the wrong way. They hate Hashem, the word, the name, the holy verb within the sacred sperm, Because in the beginning was the word. In fact, fornication is the initial hatred of Hashem or Adonai that originates all kinds of hate to the to the divinity, to the divine. Of course, when you practice this type of ritual, if you don't practice physically what we call the mikveh minit or the sexual bath because that's a symbol. Remember that Saturn is Bina that rules the parasympathetic nervous system related with the sexual glands. To submerge yourself into the water of bav, of bow, meaning to practice sexual transmutation. That is why it is stated in Kabbalah that you have to practice sexual magic in Saturday. Not that you had to fornicate only in Saturday. That's wrong. Because in order to set Kuma Adonai, in order for the Lord to rise in you, you have to rise in the spinal column because it's a fluidic force. The Lord Adonai in Kabbalah it says that is the name of God in Malkut. And of course, if we ask you, what is Malkut? We know that Malkut is a physical body. Malkut is the earth, physically speaking. And that Adonai is a fluidic force of Bina, which is ruled by Saturn. 
And that's why you go on Saturday and you submerge in the pool and the mikve minute, and you said, Kuma Adonai, and repeat the other sacred words that are already recorded here, which are sacred words that you can even repeat when you are united sexually with your wife or with your husband. Because our words that not only have to be repeated when you submerge physically in the pool, but also when you are practicing sexual transmutation. It's something secret. There are many, millions, that perform that mikveh every Saturday, but they don't know the meaning of it. They think that the enemies of the Lord are the enemies of Israel. But Israel is another word that is Isis, the Divine Mother, and Ra, the solar logos, and El is God. So it is all the parts. Hashem, Israel, the name Israel, is the name of our inner God. All of the parts that we have to collect by annihilating the ego in Saturday, because Saturday is death. That's the holy practice of Saturn, related with the kidneys, because the kidneys are related also with the sexual glands. The strength of the kidneys gives you strength in the sexual force. And this is how you find uh, how Uranus is related with Saturn, right? And is not perhaps Uranus and Saturn the two planets that you find in the sign of Aquarius? Any Aquarius person will know that, that Uranus rules the sexual glands and Saturn is also in Uranus. So here you find the relationship, how Uranus helps Saturn in order to work in your nervous system so that the fruitic forces of the Ruach Elohim rise in you in order to work and to have that uh, uh, outcome, the transmutation of the metals of the earth, alchemy or the metallic planets. Of course, you understand that the physical body then has to be clean in order for those fluidic forces to move in harmony not only in the earth, but in their physical body and in the solar system. They have to freely move in harmony. But if we put in our bodies wrong elements, as we were explaining in the last lecture with the Pankatatwa ritual, obviously we are obstructing the move of that energy, not only in the physical world and the physical body, but in the internal body. In order to create a body that we have that is beautiful in the sense that it's a wonderful body, not beautiful because I don't want to go ahead in this meaning of the, the word beauty, which means soul, tiferet. What do we need in order to create a body like this? which is very complicated and marvelous. That's why nature gave us this body in order for us to take advantage of it. What do we need in order to create one like this? Only two elements. No more. Sperm and ovum. This is it. But we know that in order to have a good sperm, we have to know how to live, how to feed ourselves, how to think, how to feel. Remember that the only people that I know that take care of the sperm, the physical sperm of animals, are people that uh, have uh, horses, that have cows, that have uh, bulls, that have sheep. They always select the best 
males to mix themselves with the female. But in the human kingdom, or the so-called human kingdom, what is what the human do or does? They collect money to pay a prostitute to pollute their sperm. And the prostitute pollutes their sexual force too, with adultery. That's very common. What we, what we eat, and we take drugs, we alter, of course, our seed. And not only the sexual seed in the sexual glands, but also the other chakras, the other glands are altered. So what kind of physical organism we have? No wonder why people are having children in this day and age that need transplants. That's a shame, in this, the, the shame of this humanity. Children that need transplants when they are babies. If we take care of our seed before uh, having the copulation and having a very mature seed, of course, we will have good, healthy children. We need sexology, study of sexology, but not the garbage that they teach in schools and universities. That you have to use condoms in order to abuse your sex. That's a shame for us. No wonder why this uh, human race is uh, degenerated. If people say, oh, we are really evolving. Well, I don't see evolution in a child that needs a, tr uh, a liver transplant or a kidney transplant or a heart transplant. By showing us that we don't take care of ourselves. Unfortunately, this is our case. In order for us as men to have good sperms, we need to know how to feed ourselves physically and psychologically. The woman has to have that sperm Her glands will attract the fluidic forces of the planet, mechanically, of course. But if her, if her glands are in health, that child will be strong. But as much healthy as a woman can be if the sperm is not good. So the cooperation between men and women has to be always uh, perfect. We have to take care of our sperm and, and ovum. You want to have uh, healthy children. Then you find here the meaning of this. The influences of the Ruach Elohim of the 12 zodiacal signs are uh, happening in the womb of the woman. Did you study how the 12 zodiacal signs are related with the, some parts of the body? Aries with the brain, the head, and Pisces with the feet, and many other things. Because you know, we know that Neptune is related with, with the pineal gland. Virgo related with the pancreas, stomach, and all of those organs that make you glutton if you don't know how to transform them. So then you find there that the 12 zodiacal signs are related with the making of that organism. Physical organism that is called a microcosmos because the Ruach Elohim of the planets of the solar forces and, and, the, and the zodiac are making their little microorganism that they need in that physical body in order to create eventually the solar man. If that soul that will receive that gift will take advantage of it. 
And you know that after nine months, that creature goes out from the womb of his mother or her mother and appears in the physical world. And then, here we find the Epta Paraparshinok, the Law of Seven, organizing in different steps every seven years the physical body. The first testicular layer in the male, in combination with the thymus gland, helps the development of that creature, physically speaking. And of course, the thymus gland is in direct relation with the mammary glands of the woman. That's why no milk of any animal or any chemical milk, milk can substitute mother's milk. Because the thymus gland attract the vibration of the moon the fruitic forces of Gabriel that always are related with birth and the mammary glands we give that milk with the hormones will help the metabolism of that child and of course here you find the relationship of the motor brain The motor brain related with the moon. The child starts developing that. Know how to walk, how to talk, with example. And of course, from the zero to the seven years in childhood, which is the influence of the moon in our physical body, you find the development of personality. So we have the personality in accordance with the examples that we receive in childhood from 0 to 7. The strength of the body. For instance, in ancient times, you find those, uh, uh, how you call, maids or women that were prepared only to feed babies. Milk ladies. Wet, wet, wet nurses. And that's why uh, uh, many uh, men were loving those women as mothers. Because they were receiving the strength of their bodies. Those men were strong. Strong muscles, strong bones. And when you find in the ancient times the story of the battles, wars that they had. And you find in museums the big swords that they were holding in those battles. How they were doing it. In this day and age, you need like three men in order to hold those swords. So why are we saying that we are better than people in the ancient times? We are wimps. We cannot hold a sword like that. And because they were fed very well. No with chemi chemicals that in this day and age, women that deny their breath to their children because of vanity, there are many other ignorant things that unfortunately is very popular. If you, have, if you want, to want to have a strong children, well, do not deny it, uh, mother's milk to your children. Unless the woman cannot develop that milk. That's very rare. And of course, the fact that a child is reaching the seven year old doesn't mean that he's there fully developed. Master Samael tells us that from the seven to the fourteen years of age, we start developing the emotional brain. Of, uh, excuse me, the intellectual brain, which is uh, related with mercury. 
That's why it's easy to learn from the 7 to the 14 years of age many things, many languages. Because Mercury is the word. If you find the relationship of Mercury, Hermes, is with the mind, with the word. You can learn many languages at that age. And of course, the second uh, testicular layer in the man gives us certain, certain forces in combination with a fire gland. I, uh, excuse me, with the brain. Somehow the fluidic forces are uh, not fluiding very well in my brain right now, right? <laughs> Let us Mercury fluid this. And I was seeing faces here. That's why. <laughs> well, is Mercury related with the brain, the develop of the speech? But uh, unfortunately, you find that in this day and age, it's very popular that children from the seven and even before to the 14-year-old, they, they, they are masturbating. Masturbation is really very bad. Because when you study sexology related with alchemy, you know very well that the most sensitive organ in the organism is the phallus in the man and the vulva in the woman. Those organs transmit and take energies because the synthesis is there of all the fluidic forces of the Ruach Elohim. When in a sexual act, a man and a woman reaches uh, or reach the orgasm, the spasm, they lose those substances. So, instinctually, each organ absorbs the fluidic forces of the other in order to replace their own vitality that was expelled with the orgasm of spasm. The human organism transmits that into the different glands, especially to the brain. That's why uh, people that fornicate with years and years, they became alike. If you notice that, that uh, have the same way of thinking, same way of being, different, uh, the same defects, even uh, physically. Those uh, fluidics are transmitted in this way. Men loses approximately, well, 100% in the spasm and attracts, let's say, like maybe 3% of the woman. But the woman is uh, more passive, so she attracts more than the male. We will say that the woman takes like 10% or 15% more. After the orgasm, of course. But in a vice of masturbation, you don't find any other force there. It's only a private vice in which the sexual organ, after the spasm or the orgasm, attracts cold air. That ruins the whole system, especially the brain. The brain, that's why in this day and age, is degenerated. People think that the brain is evolving. No, it's devolving. Why people despise classical music? Because the brain is degenerated. Those parts of the brain related with that music no longer are active because of different vices, especially masturbation. Many people are in a mental hospital because of masturbation. That cold air destroys the brain. 
That's why the great men of the past that were uh, influencing a lot of people, the populace of the earth, were penialists, having a very strong penial gland because the sexual hormones were feeding their brain in the pineal gland. From the 14 to the 21, we have another septuple cycle. It's Venus. And here we find the influence of the thyroid gland with the sexual glands. In the man, his voice turns grave, strong. The woman also changes. The third... Uh, testicular layer starts creating sperms in the man and the woman starts ovulating. Women develop before that age. The body of women are more uh, complicated than the male. Of course, those hormones that are uh, being created with the ovens and the sperms is what make a man a man and a woman a woman. And that's why you feel the attraction, sexual attraction at that age. Because your sperms are being distributed in all of your organism. And you know how to transmute it. That will be very good. But unfortunately, the vice of masturbation continues in both sexes. In ancient times, masturbation in a female uh, body, on a female uh, sex, was not so common like in this day and age. And the worst of it is that doctors advise that. Most natural and normal and healthy. I don't see any healthies in that. To be stupid is not to be healthy. To be dumb with all our chakras not in activity, is, is that to be wise? That's why we are very uh, three-dimensional and very skeptical because of that. So the fact that somebody is from the 14 to the 21 in, in his childhood, I, I, the master says, is not that he's ready to sexual activity. But there are many people that are sexually active before 14. And that's why our, our root race is like as it is. Because the sexual act is normal and logical after 21, not before. 18 in woman. Sometimes 17, because women develop faster. Then we can marry. Then we can start taking advantage of alchemy. But unfortunately, we are uh, abused in the younger ages. And when we reach the 21, we don't have the strength in order to develop in the solar epoch, which is three, because the sun is in relation with the triamasi kamno. So it's three times seven, 21 years the longest period in which we can we have to conquer nature, conquer our life, to take advantage of the solar forces. If we know how to take advantage of our own particular pool, if we know how to practice the mikveh minit, or the sexual transmutation of our own waters, and we can Say, Kuma Adonai, arise, Lord, in my spinal column and destroy my enemies so I can conquer the promised land. But at that age, as you know, uh, men and women continue their fornication, adultery. Men, in order to feel that they are men, they go to prostitutes, they drink alcohol, in order to show their friends that they are men. Or they are cool, they smoke marijuana. Or they take cocaine. 
Did you ever take LSD? Did you ever take these? You look at that. And they feel so proud when they talk about it. Proud about how we degenerate our bodies. Unfortunately, that is a sad thing. If a woman takes 10 or 15% of the values to the sexual act of the man that has sexual intercourse with her, obviously in that sexual intercourse she takes emotional aspect, mental aspect, psychic aspect, karma, in other words. So obviously a young man that is just reaching maturity and wants to experience how to be a man, he goes with a prostitute. And she teaches him how to be a fornicator and how to handle after that the different diseases, vices, not only physical, psychological, mental, that we receive because a prostitute has a lot of every man that had intercourse with her. But when we talk about this, we talk also about adultery. You don't need to be, uh, uh, to go with a prostitute in order to get the different karmas of different men or different women. You just go and practice adultery, which is very common. And then you get into your system the karmas of other men that were with your woman. Or if you're a woman, you take the karma of the, that he, uh, that man, uh, attracted from other uh, uh, different sexual acts that he had in the past. Now you understand why we are in this society, in this day and age, like a big web, worse than like the website or the internet. A lot in us. Now we have to face the consequences and not to say, oh, it's God, it's fault. We have free will. From the 21 to the 42 years in our, in our young age is the solar epoch in which the sun influences us. But after the 42, is 42 to 49 is Mars. And Mars gives us a strength. In order for us to conquer our place for uh, or to prepare place for our old age. People receive the, the inference, the strength of Mars from the 42 to the 49. But because they were abusing the solar epoch, in the Venus epoch, in the Mercurial epoch, they are very weak. Their glands are not strong. Mars energy is strong. But if our glands are weak, then we fail. And we have to uh, work very hard in order to conquer and to have uh, our home, something to prepare ourselves in order uh, to reach uh, our old age. From 49 to 56, then enter Jupiter, the father of all gods. Give us the, the scepter of the kings or queens. And then we have abandon. A lot of people that approach us, they take benefit of our dharma. But if we didn't know how to live in the martial epoch, in the solar epoch, in the Venusian epoch, Mercurial epoch, whatever, people approach us in order to give us alms. Because we have, instead of the scepter, we have the staff of the beggars. You see the, the two polarities? We're always surrounded by people in Jupiter. And people are feeling pity for us and giving us alms. Or people are around us and taking advantage of our work that we perform in the previous periods. And we will reach the old age, which is from 56 to 63. And then we find Saturn. And then we will be an elder. That everybody will look for us for advice. Grandchildren, if we have children, or people that will ask for 
advice, knowledge, wisdom for life. But it's very rare to find somebody like that. Usually, people at this age, they're looking, uh, uh, their families are looking for, for a place, special place, a house for old people to take them out of their sight because they are a burden for them. It's not like I said, oh, I'm going to go with my grandfather because uh, he's a rich man and I will take uh, some loan from him, right? Most of the cases, it says, get rid of this person here because I have to, we have to have our private life, whatever. Only those that knew how to live wisely have money and benefits their children and grandchildren. Fishing that age... Of 63, then Saturn enters again in combination with the, all, uh, the same seven planets again. Saturn in combination with the moon. Saturn in combination with Mercury. Saturn in combination with Venus. Only for those that overcome the mechanicity and you know how to transmute the metallic forces can go beyond Saturn and enter into the Neptunian period, Uranus period, Pluto. Otherwise, we are submitted to the law of seven. But remember, that's why an old man from 63 to 70 becomes like a child, because the influence of the moon, the fluidic forces of that Ruach Elohim, are entering again by the law of seven into his organism or her organism. Then Mercury. This is how you have to understand that your nervous system is always attracting the fluidic forces of the Ruach Elohim. And this is how you have to understand how the different practices in Gnosticism help you. Runes. The different runes in which you take the fruitic forces of nature, of the cosmos, in order to make that transformation in your body, in your psyche, in your mind, your spirit. This is how God works. It's not a matter of believing. It's a matter of knowing how to work with that fluidic force that in the beginning was floating upon the face of the waters. Do you have questions? Of course. That's why uh, this is what we call the path of regeneration. That's why we are open the doors of this knowledge to humanity. Because it's the only way to regenerate. That's why in the beginning when people enter into these studies, they said, well, I have one month, I have six months, I have one year, and still I don't have certain experiences. What is going on? What is going on is that your body was degenerated, was polluted, you degenerated. Now the Holy Spirit, the forces of the fluidic forces of the Ruach Elohim, are regenerating first your physical body in order for that to work normally as it should, right? In order to you to see or to, or to grasp the other forces. So remember that in the beginning, the sexual transmutation regenerates all the stupidities that we perform in the past. Your, um, obviously, the law of karma has to apply to, you're saying, to alchemy, to good sperm, that you're going to get the perfect child. You know, but doesn't the law of karma apply to, you know, any child? Of course. That's why if you want to be the vehicle of the karma of a drug addict, then degenerate yourself and you will have that soul in you as a child. But if you want to change your karma and to bring into your home a genius like Mozart, then prepare yourself, transmute, transform yourself, and then the sperm, your vibration, psychologically, physically, mentally, spiritually, will be in, t in tone with that. And then you will bring another child that will have another type of karma. Karma is always there. But you don't want to bring into the world a child with a 
terrible karma. It depends on you. The law of affinity attracts souls according to your psyche. Of course, we are vehicles of karma or dharma. It all depends on that. Do you have any other question? There's a question about why is it from an atheist believe that uh, the order of the planets changes related to the alliance? For example, some say the hogs can do nothing. Well, it is because of lack of experience. Anybody knows that hog is influenced by uh, the moon. But also, you have to understand that, as we were explaining in the beginning, the lamb with seven horns are the seven mighty archangels. And even though Venus, or I mean the Hod, is related with the moon, mainly, also you find the forces there of Venus. Because Hod is the prana, the astral light, related with the fire, with that fire that we call Hod, the glory of God, which is in synthesis uh, divided in three, which is uh, also we name when we do the exorcism of the fire. We said Mikael, king of the lightning and of the sun, is Hod. Samael, king of volcanoes, is Hod, but in, in, in different way. And Anael, prince of the astral light, which is Hod. But we are naming there the forces of certain logos or Ruach Elohim in relation with Hod. But we know directly what planet is ruling. That is the moon. And then Nessa is ruled by Mercury, mainly. But as I said, the lamb with seven horns are everywhere in every sephira. Can you go over the characteristics of the seven rays? Mars is war, Saturn, death. What are the others? Well, the moon is related with life, obviously. That's why Gabriel, Gabriel is always related with uh, the annunciation of uh, the entering or the birth of any master. And uh, related with uh, manual works, imagination, but Mercury is in relation with the intellect. A lot of uh, wisdom. Remember here, uh, Hermes, Trismegistus. Everything related with the uh, hermetic science is Mercury. And Venus, art. You find here, for instance, music, painting. What else? Anything related with art. But I repeat... Even in Venus, you find uh, Martian artists. But they are using the, the force of Venus, the third horn of the lamb, in their way. Like Beethoven, for instance, is very strong. It's Martian. But it's in Venus. And the solar force is in relation with the law. It's in relation with uh, uh, judges. with karma, police, like Mars also, army, police, the power of the word. Many great uh, uh, sur uh, people that perform good surgery, doctors, are Martians. You see, and it's Mars, but it's in relation with Mercury because medicine is in relation with the science of Mercury. There are great doctors related also with the Martian uh, ray that works in, in Mercury. And we find Jupiter related with kings, presidents, governors, principals, anything that is uh, related with uh, direction, conducting, we have the master of the ray of Jupiter, for instance, which erroneously 
some ignoramuses are saying that belongs to the seventh ray, Saturn, and not belongs to the sixth ray, the master Saint Germain. And it's related with politics. You see, the ray of politics is the sixth ray, which is also related with the master Jesus, with multitudes. So Saint Germain, Cagliostro, and many other great masters of the ray of politics belong to Jupiter, not to Saturn. So there are people that ignore all of this because they uh, don't study that internally. The influences of the Ruach Elohim. Saturn is in relation with inheritances, with land, with death. For instance, if you want to receive a, or, or to work with an inheritance that you might receive or you are having problems with inheritance, you have to work with Saturn. It's land. States. Death. And also medicine. There is a great master of the ray of death that we uh, mentioned in the internet, which is the master Kama Sots. He's uh, the bad god. The great doctor. A great physician. He handles not only death, but life. Because in order to handle death, you have to know what life is. Bless somebody's nursery. Yeah? Is it useful to do esoteric practices during the zodiacal sign related to that specific practice, whatever it might be? Of course. Any practice uh, uh, of the zodiacal sign are good anytime. But especially when the sign is vibrating, like in this moment, for instance, we are in the sign of Gemini. Gemini. Right? So that is good. Uh, the practice of uh, Jupiter in relation with astral projection as well. Any other question? Here. Well, the lamb, in Revelation, the lamb has seven horns and seven eyes. In this case, the seven eyes of the lamb are related with the chakras, related with our physiology, and the rays as well with the seven uh, serpents or kundalinis that we have to rise, and also with the seven mighty rays that we were talking in relation with the metals or the forces, the fluidic forces. But there, the beast, 666 that has seven heads, of course, they are the opposite of the seven mighty rays. These uh, seven heads are lust, anger, greed, envy, pride, gluttony, and laziness. The seven uh, sins. But the beast has ten horns. That is, it has related with the word of Klippaf. Because when you study the world of Klippath, you find the, the ten inferior spheres, beginning with Malkut, and the nine inner layers of the earth. Those are the ten horns, which are, of course, in activity in this day and age. So they're related with the Ten Commandments? Oppositely? Op obviously. <laughs> they are the opposite of the Ten Commandments. Because the Ten Commandments are related with the Tree of Life. And the opposite of the Ten Commandments are the ten horns of the beast. And you find, for instance, the opposite of every commandment, you find that you find that, that each horn is in the ego. The name of blasphemy that is written in the head of the beast are the name of the seven capital sins. Of course, there is a lot of wisdom there related because each, each one of us is the beast with ten horns and seven heads. Obviously, the whole humanity is also that. And there is a other symbol there that is not related with this lecture. Any other questions? Um, you mentioned that the, the Earth has um, like this, this metal that uh, um, collects the vibrations of the different planets, but also you mentioned that beneath the Earth there are like layers of, uh, of layers that you mentioned just now. Um, 
can it be both like go, go like different layers on the earth and at the same time like metal? Metal stuff. Well, when we talk about the nine layers of Klippa, we're not talking about physically. Remember that the earth has three aspects. The physical aspect, we were talking here about the metal veins, which are the, like the nervous system of the earth, where the Ruach Elohim, or the fruitic of the Logos, circulates. And gives life not only to the human kingdom, but to the mineral kingdom, to the plant kingdom, to the animal kingdom, etc. Then we have the second aspect of the inner layers of the earth, which is the inferior klippat, when we find hell. But the infra dimension is not physical. Infra, as are nine layers related with that. And then we have the other aspect, which is the supra dimensions. Because did you hear that many times we said that in the center of the earth is the temple of the genie of the earth, and whose name is Melchizedek? Of course, they said, well, is he in hell? No. Is in the supra dimensions within the inner layers. Now you can understand. Do you have any other question there? Since Leo is related to the sun, could you go over some of the characteristics of that sign? What characteristics? Well, uh, Leo is very intuitive. Positively. Negatively, very proud. Leo wants always to rule. And always fighting like lions. But if we take advantage of Leo, of course, he's very intuitive. And uh, Leo people, no matter if they are very poor, they will have abundance in their poverty. Because Leo is abundance. I never found any Leo person that lacks something. Even if he's very poor, he's happily living always with abundance. Abundance in their, in their own level, of course. It's good. Positively. It's the best. How are the metals related to the elementals? Oh, well, uh, in the book of astrology that eventually we will uh, publish, you will have there the relation of the, of, of the elementals. And, uh, for instance, Saturn is in relation with the gnomes. Mars is in relation with, uh, uh, with the salamanders. But we find them Venus, Mercury, even Neptune is in relation with the uh, ondins and nerates of the water. And the sun is also related with the gnomes. There are many solar creatures that act like gnomes, like, for instance, the aloe, aloe vera. That's a plant related with the sun. And there's a gnome there. <coughs> we have another gnome, which is, uh, uh, for instance, the agave americana. It's a beautiful gnome, but it's ruled by Jupiter. So you find then that Jupiter, the Sun, and Saturn are related with the Earth in that way. And Mars, of course, is salamanders, the sylphs of the air with Mercury. Metals. Well, you associate the metals and then you find them. Obviously, the metals are related with it too. In relation with all the metals, really, we will say that when you uh, have all the metals, uh, the seven main metals in a pentagram, you are uh, controlling all the forces because the seven logos influence every kingdom, every single elemental, not only of the fire, but the earth, the air, the water. <laughs>
every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Thank you.